Hello, my name is Willem Verberg. I'm the clinical lead of MicroLife, and in this presentation, I'm going to explain you the WatchPP 03 2G for MicroLife. It says 2G because it's the second generation of 24 hour blood pressure monitors from MicroLife. The device has multiple options. Um, for instance, you can screen for atrial fibrillation during the blood pressure measurement. There is a possibility to perform central blood pressure measurement. Um, this needs to be purchased. This is an extra option. It can also be upgraded afterwards by means of the software. The device has a pill button which is on top of the device so that you do not need to take the device out of the pouch when pushing the button. The software is free of charge and the, uh, the link with the PC can be performed by means of USB connection and Bluetooth. The uh, device has been validated of course for general purpose but next to that it has also been validated for different types of special patient groups such as for instance patients with end-stage renal disease children from the age of three and it can be used for diabetes patients as well and also very important to mention that it has been validated separately for pregnant women uh, with and without preeclampsia there are uh, four type of cuffs this should actually be 14 to 22 centimeter um, the as you can see the m and the l cuff they are um, always delivered with the device and the lxl cuff needs to be purchased uh, extra and so is the s cuff um, the lxl cuff has been separately validated for patients with large arm circumference. The cuffs are available in nylon and cotton and, and the cuffs are suitable for the washing machine and it's also important to mention that the cuffs are latex and PVC free. Uh, what I already mentioned, uh, it has a medication button, but what is the improvement as compared to the previous generation is that the surface is very flat and so that makes it very easy to clean. The previous generation did not have the Bluetooth connectivity and this device can be upgraded. And the software is free of charge and for this you need to download the WatchPP analyzer. I will uh, demonstrate that in a minute and here you can see the pill button where I'm talking about already three slides long and the tube connector is more solid it's a metal connection on top of the device and uh, the, um, also the USB port uh, can be closed and this all makes it easier to clean with, uh, for instance, alcohol liquid. So it prevents the fluid from dripping into the device. This is actually the way it is delivered. Um, sorry for the sloppy picture, but I think it is all clear here. Um, there, um, the standard, it comes with an M and L cuff and the XL cuff needs to be ordered separately and so is the S cuff and this is the pouch, the carrying bag of the device. Um, further, it's also important that um, it's very easy to extend the uh, tube for, for the cuff in case you have, for instance, taller patients. This is how the Bluetooth connectivity looks like. You need to um, activate the Bluetooth before you can establish the connection to the PC. I will demonstrate that in another video. The USB cable is a universal connection. So that means that uh, in case you do not uh, or the, you, you lose the cable that is delivered with the device, you can uh, use a general cable, but make sure that the quality is good enough. Then the SDKs are available with this um, device free of charge 
and you can download it from our software you first have to sign a non-disclosure agreement first um, but generally that is not a problem there are different SDKs for Windows 10 but can also be used with for instance a tablet or iPhone or an Android phone and we give all our collaboration in case you would like to do this. I'm now going to demonstrate you how to link the blood pressure monitor to the PC and for this we need to download the software uh, belonging to the device first and this is very easy to do you go to the microlife website which is microlife.com then go to professional products and to select the type of device you have the watch bp03 we have the watch bp032 g and you can scroll down to the button and there uh, you can see under downloads that you can uh, download the instruction manual I would always recommend to do that because it has a lot of additional information such as how to clean the device but also um, in case you have some errors or whatsoever it is explained what um, the errors mean uh, so it's very useful if you click on watch vp analyzer you can uh, find it, the program in your download folder just click on it and it will be automatically installed it's very easy to do thereafter an icon will appear on your screen and if you click on it you will see the watch vp analyzer uh, software and this is the interface then in order to program the device we need to connect the device to the PC this can be done by a USB cable or by means of Bluetooth I'm doing that now and then you see that the software automatically detects the correct device it's the watch bp03 it also tells me that I need to renew the battery because it has not enough voltage to complete another 24 hour blood pressure measurement schedule if I would like to perform my measurement on a new patient I click on new and I fill out the patient ID that can be the hospital number or the date of birth it can be characters and numbers up to 10 and then you can fill out the name of the patient the sex date of birth also the physician the physician's name, the physician ID will be stored uh, in the software. So you do not need to do that every time. Um, I am not going to do that in this case. I just use an existing patient. So I'm now going to program the device. So uh, I click on program the device and there you can see that this interface pops up and it I have the possibility to fill out one, two, three, four, five different schedules. And this is something that previous devices uh, did not have. And um, yeah, it's just an extra advantage. If you only would like to use uh, wake and uh, sleep time, then you only need two schedules. Let's start with that then just ask the patient what time do you think you get up this patient will get up at 8 for instance and go to bed at 10 then I use this as awake time and I program the device to measure every 20 or every 15 minutes according to the guidelines I click on silent um, silent means that the patient will get a silent warning one minute before the measurement start if I take this off then there will be a beep before one minute before the measurement takes place as a warning that the patient uh, will be measured in one minute from now um, but I click uh, on silent so that the patient get a soft uh, warning and that is done with by inflating the cuff a little bit so that the patient feels it but uh, most likely the environment will not notice 
Then the second schedule um, starts at 22 because that's where the previous one ended. So I fill out 10 and I can end by 8. So that will be my nighttime uh, measurement then. Don't forget to tick the box, otherwise no measurement will take place. If I would like to have more measurement, then uh, more schedules, then I could, for instance, uh, program this from 10 to 4, and then I have some hours left, as you can see, from 4 to 8, and I can measure, for instance, every 5 minutes. It's a complete different schedule, and I can also add the option central block pressure measurement if that belongs to my device. Um, and that means that it also shows that you do not need to perform central block pressure measurement all the time, but you can just select a period in which you want to do that. Then I have the option of setting the highest inflation pressure. When you leave it on auto, which is recommended, the device will automatically search for the correct inflation pressure. So this is the best thing to do. However, for some, some patients might have fear that the cuff inflates too high and um, they feel more comfortable if you set this to, for instance, a max of 200 millimeters of mercury so that the device will not inflate higher than uh, this value, um, but I leave it on auto. And then the option hide blood pressure readings. This means that the blood pressure readings will not be shown on the LCD screen after each measurement has been taken. I would recommend to uh, tick this box because you do not want uh, to have your patient looking at the blood pressure measurement value each time a measurement has been taken. So once that's all done, then you click on program and it says programming the device will automatically clear all measurement data on the device. And that makes a lot of sense because you do not want to send a patient home having the data of a previous patient stored in the device. So I click on OK and click again on program and then I will get um, a message. There it comes that the blood pressure device is programmed successfully. So I can now um, connect the device to the patient and send the patient home. And after the patient uh, returns the blood pressure monitor after 24 hour, then we do the same. We connect the device again to the PC and we click now on download. And then it tells me the data on the device refers to patients with uh, who has the ID HQ. And that is correct. This is what I've done uh, yesterday. So I click on continue. It can also ask me if I would like to have the waveform data. This is in case of uh, central blood pressure measurement has been done. So I continue now and then it tells me that the data are stored. So let's show an example that is already on my PC. And so I click on the uh, watch BP03 data and I click on the measurement tab and there you see all the raw data uh, of this patient. And you can see the date and the time the measurement's been taken and uh, the systolic, diastolic blood pressure values, the mean arterial pressure, the pulse pressure, which is the difference between systolic and diastolic pressure, and the heart rate. In this case, the device also screened for atrial fibrillation, and you can see that it flagged uh, several measurements, uh, which means that atrial fibrillation was detected during these measurements. The, um, you need to be aware that the chance of having false positive atrial fibrillation readings for this device is quite high because 
a patient should be very well instructed to keep the arm still during blood pressure measurement but this is not always possible and not always done so uh, for that reason you might have a lot of false positive readings and it's recommended to only consider uh, to have the patient uh, to refer the patient for 24 hour halter ECG monitoring to uh, to confirm the atrial fibrillation if 30% or more readings have this flag. So um, then you can also see that you have the possibility to exclude the measurement for some reason. Uh, the measurements may not fit to the patient. For instance, the patient uh, saw uh, was watching uh, a football game of his favorite uh, favorite uh, team and. Um, the, this led to overestimated blood pressure values for instance you can exclude that and these measurements will not be taken into account for the average blood pressure values so once we have done this we go to report and there you can see that you have the possibility to generate a pdf a report and an excel report and um, you have the possibility to change threshold values however on default the threshold values are according to the american and european heart associations and uh, hypertension association so this is okay you need to ask the patient what was the actual awake and sleep time because it will calculate separate day and nighttime uh, blood pressure values so if you do not take into account the real awake and asleep times then it might be that you consider for instance uh, a nighttime blood pressure value as a daytime blood pressure value and the other way around this is not what you want so you it's important that you ask the patient afterwards did you really go to bed at the time that you mentioned the day before and so on then you have the report option. You can hide the atrial fibrillation results in, in case you think it's not appropriate to screen for atrial fibrillation for this patient or uh, hide error and event messages. Um, I would never recommend to do that. Um, the report might look prettier if you tick this on, but the error messages give you a lot of valuable clinical information. So I would always recommend to leave that open. Then you could add a logo. If you like, for instance, a hospital logo or primary care practice logo, which will appear on top of the reports. You just select image file and you select the image that you want to implement and you can see here that the reports are stored in the report folder which is on the c disk under the name microlife this is on default however in case you would like to store the reports on another in another path then you can just select that and the software will remember the last option then we go to generate the PDF report just click on that and the report will show up as you can see it is a one page report which follows the recommendations the blue bar indicates the nighttime blood pressure the gray bars are the normal threshold values so actually what you would like to see is that the patient has blood pressure data that falls within these ranges and not above as is the case here you can also see that during nighttime the threshold values are uh, lower because normally you would like to see that a healthy patient has a lower blood pressure during nighttime than during sleep time if this is not the case then this patient might have for instance sleep apnea syndrome or something like that the, so normally this this is what you call dipping and normally you want this to be 10 percent if it's 10 percent it means with 10 percent we mean that the uh, nighttime blood pressure is 10 percent lower than the daytime blood pressure um, 
this is colored red here because uh, as a warning that this is not 10% or higher. Here you can uh, see the heart rate data in case the pill button has been pushed, which is unfortunately not done in this case, you will see a vertical uh, bar at the point at the time point that the medication button was pushed. Here you can see the average blood pressure values and the standard deviation and the raw data you can find here and each measurement that was above the threshold value colors red. What else do we have? We have the total number of readings which is in this case 95% and this is something you want to see. In if this is 70% or less then you might consider to um, repeat the blood pressure measurement which of course the patient will not very appreciate. Then you can see here the white coat window and the reason that this white coat window is there is that um, you need to take into account that the first measurements are generally higher than subsequent measurement, which is also the case here. This is because at that time the patient probably still is in the primary care practice or in the hospital and you can see for this patient the first measurement is the highest and the second is getting lower and the third is more according to the average blood pressure measurements. And then there is the comment, oh, I forgot to mention that, if you uh, click on generate comment, you can see that the auto comment appear um, and it is also a useful tool to help the clinician um, with the judgment of this report. Uh, it tells, for instance, that this patient had daytime normal tension, but uh, isolated 24-hour diastolic hypertension. It's a non-dipper, which we discussed, and so on. You also have the possibility to add some comment as well. So when you save that, it will appear on the report. So this is where the comment appears. And next to that, we also have the possibility to generate an Excel report. Um, when I click on that, I had already opened one. You can see that it is a report with uh, three tabs. It shows the raw data. It doesn't look uh, that nice, but it's very useful for research data analysis also has the summary values as you can see and also a separate tab for each time that the pill button is pushed. It's very useful and it will be stored as a CSV file so it's compatible with almost any software. So this is actually everything um, about the software and how to generate the report. In a separate video, I will demonstrate how the connection with Bluetooth should be established.